Hi, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be putting together a Johnny FPV 5 inch freestyle quad at the build table. My name's Johnny, welcome to Will It Mod. So, a magical box arrived this morning and I filmed all of the unboxing only to find out that my microphone wasn't working. So, let's unbox it again. It's everywhere. I've eaten this sweet, it's delicious. I've unwrapped everything, made a complete mess. It's gone well, it's been a good morning. Uh, anyway, here's the box. Here's the box. Stop the gag I did earlier, it's hilarious. Hello, I'm a box. Yeah. yeah. Um, long story short, I like saying that. long story short, short story long, that would be boring wouldn't it? Um, I was going to build a four inch uh, freestyle quad, but I couldn't find any decent motors to give it some punch. The closest I could get on a 4S was a set of 1507s, I think it did 3800 kV. And I've got them on my Copus Mini. I didn't really fancy them on a 4-inch because it'd be sluggish. I mean, it might be all right, but... Uh, anyway, no parts coming in from China. A real nightmare. So I figured, why not do a 5-inch build? So I spoke to the lovely guys down at droneislife.co.uk. And um, I haven't dealt with them before, but I thought I'd buy some bits off them anyway. And I did. And uh, they threw in some free bits as well. Some... Uh, TPU stuff anyway, but what's all this about and what's gonna happen with all of this? Well, what have we got? We have got My name's Johnny and so is this dude. He's got the same name as me uh, Johnny FPV the QAVS special edition Luminaire, so I'm gonna build this little monkey and I figured Might as well do a Luminaire build <clears throat> So I uh, bought a whole bunch of Luminaire parts now what I'm gonna do is unbox everything here again and uh, down the bottom uh, on the bottom here I will put in a bunch of different uh, sections for each build and I'm just going to build this in real time but I'm not expecting you poor people to watch all of this nonsense I mean, feel free to watch it from start to beginning if you really want but the idea is uh, unboxing and then we'll move into putting the frame together <clears throat> and then wiring and ESC and all that kind of stuff and then programming and ELRS and and then first flight and ultimate crash, I'm sure. So uh, um, that's what's going to happen with all of this. Anyway, so we've got that. Fantastic. L really looking forward to this, by the way. You know, it's either this or the Bardwell edition, and the Johnny edition. Uh, you're able to fit in a, a specific type of camera, which is on the way. We're going to be using a DJI O3 for this. So uh, this will take it. Some nice free TPU stuff. Um, which I might have to reprint some of because go look at the ELRS um, antenna. No bueno, no bueno. So um, I will probably make or design out an STL and get that printed. Might do purple. Don't know. Let's see how, how I'm feeling. So ELRS is a Hermes Express LRS, uh, 2.4 gigahertz. I've gone for that with a little. Twin and oh, it's a single antenna, but uh, twin, twin antenna, single antenna, twin dipole. They call that a dipole. I don't know. What are those? Also have motors. Motors. Four of these. Four is important. Three is not enough, and five is too many. These are the Zylo Stealth, 2207, 1800 kV. Look at that. And these are in like a satin black finish. And uh, when was the last time any of you saw magnets and coils that clean? Why are all filthy? So, these look nice. And yes, this is going to be a 6S build. So these are 1800 kV should give me plenty of punch. 
often also include a set of candy canes. <clears throat> I usually fly the watermelons. Uh, these candy canes have got a lot more punch. I'm probably not that good of a pilot yet. I'll stick with the watermelons for now. I tried candy canes once and um, it was it was awesome, but also quite scary. But then that wasn't my first week of flying, so maybe I should give it another go. So, motors. The motors hardware they come with is a single nylock nut and four M3 screws. I'm guessing these are, are going to be the right depth. If not, I've got a whole tray of screws over there and bolts and nuts and everything else. So we can deal with that. Okay, ESC. BR Heli 32. Um, firmware based Lumineer Razor LED. Uh, so this is the 55 amp uh, 6S F3 4 in 1 ESC. And... Um, has an LED system, don't you know? How flash. Uh, I've opened all these, look, you saw the proof. Proof. I've did the video before already. This comes with a nice cable uh, that connects the flight controllers to the ESC. All nice high quality silicon cables there. Ooh, yeah, they are nice. Right, next up, look at the board. Look at that. It's probably not in focus, but look at it. It's absolutely stunning. The quality on, on this board, I've, you know, I've seen a fair few electronic boards in my time. In fact, my first job was putting surface mount components onto prototype circuit boards. Yeah. Not quite as small as some of those. Actually, they probably were. I was young and foolish. I was uh, 16, 17 at the time. Um, and I remember having, even back then, terrible eyesight, which was a, a benefit because I could take my glasses off and go really close, you know, get within a millimetre and hail all those lovely lead fumes, which would explain a lot. Oh, anyway, also in the pack we get a whole bunch of hardware. So we've got some stacks and some long bolts and some nuts and some split washers and... And annoyingly, a capacitor, I've just ordered 50 of these last night, which is going to turn up today at some point. <coughs> uh, there are, uh, There is a capacitor in it, it's 1000 microfarad, 35 volt, 35 volt, plenty, 50 volt, massive, 35 volt, decent size, 1000 microfarad. Is there any real benefit over the 470 in terms of current inrush, uh, preventing damage? I don't think so. It's a, you know, diminishing returns after 470 microfarad, but in all honesty, if it comes with a thousand, I will fit a thousand because they've done it for a reason. And let's be honest, it's only just a, a size constraint, isn't it? It's, it's not like it's going to weigh any more and affect any performance. Right, so what better flight controller to go with than this one? which is a Luminaire Lux HD F7 flight controller because it's white as well and it looks pretty. So this really is turning into be a Luminaire build. No, we don't have any Luminaire motors, but uh, apparently these are made by Luminaire. But don't tell anyone. All right. Shh, keep it quiet. So in here we have some cables, some more lovely cables, the same beautiful silicon thin cables. This looks like the DJI link cable. We won't be needing that yellow wire, that's for sure. We're not going to be using SBUS on this because we are running, or will be running, Express LRS. We have another flight controller to ESC cable here. Your Royal Mail parcel has been delivered. Yeah, I know, I've got it right here. Thank you, computer. Um, and again, look at this board. Isn't that just stunning? So we've got the DJI port there, and we've got a, a breakout there. Very nice. The breakout goes to the flight control to the um, ESC. And then, with regards to UART, so take my goggles off. We've got along this row here, ground five volt TX and RX four, and then SDA and SCL for our compass if we have one or magnetometer. And then across this side, we have TX and RX six LED five volt. A dash, a mystery, a mystery one. And then BZ positive and negative on that side. Again, really nice uh, hardware used on this ARM processor on there. What is that? It's an F722 on there. Plenty of space, plenty of beans. Very nice. A little space on the back for a, a Bluetooth module on UART 6, if you fancy doing that. 
and then you've got an M5 and M6 and then a boot short there as well. If you're getting into DFU mode, I presume, if the button... I've had a button fall off. I had a crash in the Copus Mini and the, um, the, the boot button fell off. Well, at least the inner bit did. Oh, and because I ordered those other capacitors, of course they've given me a capacitor in this bag as well. There is another 1000 microfarad uh, 35 volt cap in there, also with a bunch of hardware. So again, there are long bolts and you know, split washers in here. There are split washers and some silicon squishy grommets and all sorts, and then the hex standoffs as well. So that is what we've got in the boxes. There is some more junk turning up today. The DJI 03 unit is turning up, along with a get in there, along with um, a new SD card, one of the correct speed. I thought I'd save some pennies, and I bought one from Argos. It's it's useless. It was like a SanDisk. Was it even a SanDisk? No, it was a it was a Samsung. Do I have it? Do I have it? Oh, it might be in here. Let's shoot off on a tangent. This little box of printed little TPU squishy micro SD box. Um, this one, it was this one. Look at that little cover, the little adapter, acts as the lid. Huh, <laughs> brilliant. Um, Samsung Evo Plus. Uh, this is micro SD XC1. It's got a little three in a container. You would have thought, yeah, it'd be nice and quick. Uh, yeah, it is. It's uh, on a read. It's 92 mega second. Fantastic. And then on a write, I was only getting 12 mega seconds, so it's obviously balked. Um, I reformatted it and uh, did a low level format on it to try and fix it, and kind of got that up to 22 megabytes a second, but it's still really slow. And that's why in my last video, uh, all of the uh, footage from my Nazgul was all grainy and horrible because of that. Thanks very much. Anyway, so I've ordered a nice quick one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and split this into sections and get things done. So the first step is going to be to put the frame together and I will put that in the next section. So um, yeah, feel free to have a click around and whatever it is you're searching for, uh, fiddle away in the timeline below. And uh, for now, let's get cracking with the frame. Here we go. So I managed to sort out the microphone. It's because I've wired it in on this US, oh, no, it doesn't matter why it wasn't working, it wasn't working and now it is. So now we have the, the lovely microphone Samson working. I don't want to ruin the box. Should use a knife, Johnny. Okay. Right. Let's see how badly wrong we can get this. Now this is my first quad build. How exciting a change from all the other stuff. Let's have a look inside the box. So we have, uh, oh, we have more battery straps. I'm glad I, I bought battery straps because we've got some more there. Let's have a look in this first bag and delve in and see what we've got. Might as well make a proper mess. I'm going to put the bits in here. Okay, so we've got a couple of little grommets, presumably four. Yeah, there we go, like a rear flexible silicon tail section. I think the grommets pop in there and give you the ability to put your aerials and stuff in there. Mmm, foam pads, battery pad. These are nice. Look at that. Yep, nice strap. Uh, we've got some... <clears throat> oh, we've got some feet. It saves me printing some off, I suppose. Four little feeties. And yeah, I am going to use those because <clears throat> I'm not delicate. We've got the camera mount for the front. Now apparently if you mount these around one way, uh, there is a different offset. And yeah, you can see that. Well, can you see that? The camera's probably not that good. If I get one out here, look, the, the hole is offset towards one side. In this case, it's further towards the this side. And it changes the offset uh, of, of these so that it makes the them further in or further out, depending on what camera you have. So to snug them up, I think you can run these with the larger block on the inside with the DJI 03, and it negates the need for a spacer. So got those, that's cool. Some lovely black, gloss black standoffs. A foam pad. Very expensive. Don't lose that. Some more dog bones in foam. Some silicon standoffs, two of. 
some more uprights and some zip ties. Okay, next up we have the X section for the center and the little chamfers, little, these are the bits that support the arms, that lock the arms into place. Then we have this part here, which I think is where the GoPro standoff goes. I think that's for the GoPro standoff. Oh, look at this. Nicely laid out. M2, cap head, M3, uh, recessed, M3 cap head, dome head, Allen, all sorts of stuff. Nicely laid out. So I'm sure we'll get all the wrong sizes in all the wrong holes. And all the carbons individually wrapped in here as well, look. So there we have the section. Now, on, on the, this is interesting. On the videos I've seen, these have all been uh, stainless steel, exposed steel, and they look more like nuts, whereas these look like they're, they're captive, almost captive in the carbon. Interesting. Gives it a much more stealthy look. Beautifully manufactured. I mean, even all the... Tempted to open it. All the edges have been chamfered and rounded off nicely. Beautiful bit of carbon. Johnny FPV. has got my name on it. I'm famous. <laughs> yeah, that's the top bit. Very nice. Oh, look at these arms. Amazing. And that's it. That's all there is to the frame. We do have some stickers. More stickers with my name on it. What's your name? Oh, my name's Johnny. Oh, all right, yeah. You fly FPV? Yeah, yeah, Johnny FPV. No, not that one. Not that one. No, 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 no. You watch him for cinematic entertainment. You watch me for comedic crash value. Anyway. Should we try and put it together? There's no instructions. I feel like, um... Oh, let's not do that. I feel like we should probably go online to look at instructions, or should we just give it a go? I think we should do instructions. Let me print them off. Uh, give me two minutes. I'm going to print them off. I'm a man of instructions these days. Right, one moment. Come on! Save paper. Oh, I should have done it double-sided. Don't have a go, guys. I'm just just trying to follow the instructions like any normal male. I'm new at this. I'm new at instructions. This is a, this is a novelty, but I need them. Anyway, back to the build. Magic. Magic. Okay, assembly guide. I've got an assembly guide. How good is that? Drunk everywhere already. It's a complete pickle. Don't be fooled. Anyone who's got a clean build desk, it's, uh, it's not a real thing. It's not a real thing. Right, here we go. Assembly guide. Number one, use the split plate top and the X isolation plate. Uh, the 425mm screws to secure both plates. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, which one is that? So the X plate. X plate. Let's grab the X plate. And the. No, it says the split plate top. Well, I don't know which one the top is and which one the bottom is. Oh, this is going to be a fun video. Let's open these with pliers because that's a thing. Okay, so I can only presume, you know, if we're firing bolts into this, they're going into the bottom, so it only makes sense that that would be the top piece. But then if we've got the X plate going through, wouldn't that be the bottom piece? Oh, I don't want to get it wrong now. I used to build a lot of Lego when I was a kid, you know, Lego Technic stuff. And uh, for those of you that have done a similar thing, oh, let's just look at the pictures and see where they match. For those of you that have done a similar thing, um, you'll know what it's like when you get to near the end and you find that uh, 
you put a piece right in the middle that shouldn't have been there. Okay, so the image does look like this piece. It has a slightly different look to it. But I'd say it is this piece um, with the two ends, the two holes at one end. And that's going on later. So we'll, we'll grab this one and then we'll pop that in there like so. Which seems odd because we've got some countersunk. Oh, no, okay, that's just where the bolts are. Okay, 425 mil screws. Look, we're off. We're off. We're off. Let's find the 25 mils. 16s. 23s. So, empty these. Are you going to do a build? Yeah, I'll do a build. But everyone does a build. Yeah, but I've not done a build before. Okay. It would be boring. Oh, I'll just, just put a put a timeline in. Solves everything. Okay. What size we got? In the size. Okay, 425mm screws to secure both plates. You can really start to feel the quality in this kit. Um, I've been watching some builds of is it the Apex as well, and um, seeing how that uh, this X plate kind of flaps around on that build was was interesting. See, I find it odd that that's all of these retainers here are specifically like these captive nuts are just to hold the x-plate in but then I suppose the amount of force going through let's speed it up by doing that the amount of force going through these arms especially with my crashing okay number three Use the split plate top, the X isolation plate, and four 25 mil screws to secure both plates. Uh, yeah, instructions are good. I don't know this whole thing of people not using instructions comes from. I mean, if it's something that I can logically work out, I'm sure the same as a lot of you guys, then it would be a case of, yeah, I can work this out, I don't need the instructions. But, um, Again, stemming back to the Lego Technic days, you needed those instructions. There's no way you're going to look at the box. One of the, my favourite Technics that I had going back, I must have been 10 or 11, maybe even younger. It was uh, it was the Lego Technic car, and it had a little a little gearbox. It was red, and it had suspension and an engine that kind of revolved around. And good fun. Right, these are M3. I'm going to use three points on the screwdriver to do up an M3 because I don't have a. Well, I do have a miniature torque wrench, but you know I'm not going to go mad with it. So I use three fingers, and I don't go mad. I just tighten it up with three fingers. If it's an M3, two if it's an M2, and so on. It, it served me well over the years, and it still seems to work okay for now. So that's what I do. It's just my way of doing it. I'm not telling you to do the same thing, but it's what I do. Right, next up, use the split plate bottom, the arm support wedges, and the two 12mm screws to complete the bottom plate assembly. So this shows this being this way, this being that way. Now, is this directional? It's kind of hard to tell which end looks prettier. That looks nice. So that's going to go roughly there, and the wedges are going to go in like so. Good, it means to put the screws on the right side. Let's get the wedges out. And then we're looking for the 212mm. Oh, we are looking for 212mm. Are they 12s? They're 13.14. I'm sure that they are the 12. Unless these are domed. They are domed. Those are also domed. Let's go for those. Second one. Two of those. Yes, the Lego Technic car. Um, 
really good fun but if you didn't read the instructions properly you were in trouble this kind of feels like that kit takes you back to those days a little bit okay just put that in there finger tight same with this one line it up smash it in <clears throat> I'm going to tighten these fully because I, I presume these are going to have to spin around at some point when the arms go in. Right, it's looking good. We have a, a bottom with the beginning of a stack. <coughs> After assembling the bottom plate system, slide in the forearms and secure them with the four 25mm standoff and 16, four 16mm screws. Okay, let's get the arms. Forearms. Fruit salad all over my hands. Thanks for the fruit salad, by the way. Drone is life. Very nice. Alright, let's see how. She put these all along completely wrong. I gave like a, a squashed dead cat. No, let's not be silly. Let's not be silly. Um, okay, so we've got that facing up. I'm going to do this in the right orientation. Um, Interesting. So that slides in there. Oh, I see. That's pretty nifty. That kind of goes in. So, yeah, let's loosen off those wedges a little bit more so they're free. Wiggle the arms in. Oh, very nice. They are snug. This is well engineered. Am I doing that one right? No, of course I'm not. Let's get that one in there. And him in there. That wedge around the wrong way. Yep. Let's get that wedge in there as well. That looks okay. Good. Now the four 16 millimeter screws. Now these screws, does it show the cap head? They're dome head as well. Now that's interesting. Unless, must be these. Fifteen point three. Oh. Either my calipers are off, or I just can't use them properly. I'll go with the latter. Okay, let's get those 16 mils out. One, two, three, four. Still recording. Excellent. Now, looking at how these go in together, I should probably put them in from the correct orientation, I'd say. Uh, they're going to go in from the bottom into the standoffs. So, let's get them in there first, before we tighten anything up. Give the arms a bit of a wiggle as they go in. Very nice. Are you going to go through? You are. Really impressed with the, the carbon on this. The tolerances are, are super tight. I mean, these bolts are just sliding in. A really good fit. Some of them are just pulling through using their own thread rather than grating away at the carbon. Okay, so now we have four 25mm standoffs and four 16mm screws. So 25mm standoffs. One inch. 25mm standoff. What's that? Compare the market that time. I think. Are they all 25 mil? They look it. Okay, let's uh, pop these on then. I was looking around at some cameras. 
as well. I've got a GoPro nine, and I've got a GoPro Max currently. The nine is heavy. Yeah, it's really heavy, and uh, I never really paid much attention to them, uh, to the GoPro stuff. And then I thought, oh, I wonder if they still do that little session cam. Why did they kill off the session cam? That session cam was epic. I should probably put Loctite on these. Um, should I do that now? No, because I might have to pull it apart, because I'm probably doing it wrong. But I will put Loctite on them. Because they don't come with Loctite. Should I put Loctite on them? Should I put Loctite on them? Should I put Loctite? I'm going to put Loctite on them. I'm going to be, I'm going to be good. Yeah, so they killed off the session cam, which I think is really odd. That's a great bit of kit. And then I, I thought, well, let's have a look at the DJI session. And um, from the footage I've seen, it doesn't look any better than the, the, the DJI 03 cam footage. So, what's the point, really? Right, have we got any in here? This usually comes out at a ridiculous rate, so I'm just going to blob them on the top of the bolts because the amount that comes out of this. Now I've said that, I'm hoping I'll just get a little bit. It's blocked. Oh, there we go. Yep, going everywhere. Cloth. Go for a little blob and you end up with like a litre on each. Don't need a lot. Just needs enough for my own peace of mind. So uh, yeah, comparing it to the what was I the DJI Session Cam, and it kind of looks cool. I mean, they look nice and everything, and it, I like the look of a drone with a camera on the front of it. I think it looks cool. Uh, realistically, when am I going to need the footage off of a GoPro over what I can get off of the DJI, uh, the O3 unit? Uh, I'm probably not going to need that that often, but for me, the bit that is missing is the audio. And I know it's a well contended point, but I do I do like listening to it. So when I play the videos back, it's nice to have the the wear of the motors. I've never been an analog guy, I've never had an analog system, I have no idea what it's like to fly them with the noise and the feedback other than what you get, you know, just through your, your ears, but uh, anyway. I uh, should probably lock tight the two X, the two uh, wedges, so I'm just going to back them off three turns and put a blob inside here. Oh, you're going, oh it's not the way you uh, use. No, it's probably not, but you know what? It works. Also makes a horrific mess. Look, see, bubbling down. There we go. Wipe, wipe. It's in there. No, my luck. I'd be like, oh, I won't put uh, Loctite on those. I'm just screwing them in, backing them off, screwing them in, backing them off. Just get a little bit on the end. It's fine. Yeah, no, my luck would be the two screws that I don't lock tight in place that come flying out and then all my arms come flying off with hilarious results. Okay. Tidy. Okay, place the camera plates and two 35mm standoff. Secure them with four 6mm screws. So, do we have more standoffs? We do have one, two more standoffs. We also have the camera... And thanks to a post I saw last night in prep for all of this um, that said you have to have the offset with the DJI so the fat bits are pointing in we will go ahead and do fat bits in They're nice little spaces right um, where are we place the aluminium camera plates and two foot two 25 millimeter standoff secure them with four six millimeter screws so I don't know you think I'm daft measuring all these screws, but honestly. Uh, they are 
6.4 millimeters. Oh, look, I've got screws flying out everywhere. What size was that? That was you. Get back in there. Get back in there, please. Oh, so what did you do today? Oh, I went on YouTube and watched this idiot called Johnny put screws back into plastic packets. It's really frustrating because he took ages just to get one in. And why are you watching it? I have no idea. Why are you watching this? There we are. In you pop. Okay. Let's open this. We need four of these. No, get back in there. Fine, you can stay out. If you get lost, you get replaced with my Amazon special black screws. Oh my god, there's bits going everywhere. Okay. Oh, all four of you have decided to join the party. Fine. You can go over there. One, two, three, four. Two standoffs, four of them. Fantastic. So we're going to get this piece with the lower bit towards the front, and we're going to go with the camera stands. With the fat bit inwards. Wish I could put my fat bit inwards. Okay, we're not going to tweak it up too tight. We're going to take that straight back off again and apply a blob of blue. So look how much comes out. That's too much. Don't use that much, everyone. I was bad with airfix as well when I was a kid. Did have airfix and um, the amount of glue—that's just a ridiculous amount of glue. Come on, the amount of glue that uh, I, I wanted to get out of the squeezy packet versus the amount that actually came out were two entirely different—not uh, only quantities but probably realms. Ridiculous amounts. Right, so. They're in there. Standoffs are going on the rear, so let's move you out of the way, spin you around, get to you. Oh, these tools are really nice, by the way. They're Team Black Sheep. I think these came from Unmanned. Did they get from Unmanned? Or Hobby RC? I have no idea. There's only one of them that had them in stock at the time, so. They've kind of been main shops for me so far. Uh, I've got stuff from your FPV, got some props and bits and pieces from him. I've got my Kakute uh, F7 replacement ESC, no, replacement flight controller, sorry, for the Copis. Yes, I had a crash in the Copis and pretty much wrote off the H7 that was in there, so I've replaced that with an F7. Right, M3, so three points, contact on the screws and tweak them up. Don't want to do the fronts up fully yet because I'm sure they will need tweaking. Right, onwards. Look at this. Camera guide, uh, assembly guide for the camera plates. Well, I don't have a camera yet, so I can't do that, but that's great. Thanks for the guide. And then the rear is for the stack. So the silicon bits that I've put in a very safe place. There we go sit in the back okay that makes sense let's just pop it in here for now and see how we get on we're doing this right around they've got x supports in there or there's this kind of tpu thing let's pop the tpu in there for now see how it all measures up like I say, I might have to reprint something for some antenna standoffs at the back that suit my application. Right, what I'll end up doing is is uh, popping the top of the frame on, and then I can move on to doing other things, uh, and we'll revisit. At least that'll give me the chance to square up the camera plates at the front, and then we can um, wait for the the blue to go off, the Loctite to go off. At that point, 
once I know it's roughly together then I'll be able to uh, stuff do other stuff as it arrives okay so let's have a look at this secure the top plate to the standoff uh, and the camera plates by using six six millimeter countersunk so let's grab the rest of those six millimeter countersunks one two three four I'm not going to lock tight these because these are coming apart later. So this is going to go one, two. Interesting. So it says to put them in the hole slightly further back, but that is not possible according to that. Unless I've got this on back to front. Yeah, ignore that. Ignore that, everyone. This guy's an idiot. See, I told you. For those of you that had any doubts, there you are. I'll just tweak these up. Just nip them up. Put everything in here to square it off for me to take apart again very shortly. One, two, three, four. Now you see they say use those ones, but you know what, they didn't say use the countersunk, oh it did. It says use the countersunk ones. For those of you that are watching this going, my goodness this is painful. Yeah I agree it probably is, but look it's my first build, so it's my first build. I was even looking at the countersinks on here going, hmm, I should probably use countersinks for that. Yeah you probably should Johnny, probably should. And ping everywhere. Right. So for this one, everyone, I advise that you use the six millimeter countersunk. Yeah, okay, we're just going to nip these up. And that leaves four bolts up the top here for the GoPro standoff. Nice little design feature there. There we are, don't have to worry about that being tight for now. Then the GoPro standoff uses four 12mm, so four isolation T spaces. That will be these little fellas here, one, two, three, four. Um, four 12mm screws, that will probably be these, I'm guessing. These are the 12 mil. Calls them screws. Are they screws? No, I'm not convinced. They are 12 mil. Okay. So these look like they go in there, and then it's saying to use standoffs, camera plates, four isolation T spaces, four silicon rubber grommets. There's three rubber grommets. I have three rubber grommets. There's a rubber grommet floating around here somewhere. It's gone on holiday. So I've got to find out where that. Ah, there it is. It's in one of the feet, look. Hiding in there. Cheeky monkey. I know I'm disorganised, but still. Uh, right, so they go on through the bottom. Let's get this orientated correctly. What looks nicer? That bit looks nicer. I'll have it that way up. So we'll put the T pieces in the bottom. Alright, T piece, T piece. Interesting. So what this is saying to do is rubber spacer and then a T-piece so are we saying these rubber grommets go over the T-pieces 
for a kind of isolation purposes. Will they fit over them? They will. Okay. So I think it kind of goes like that. Well, that does seem odd. It doesn't seem like there's enough of a standoff. Unless, let's redo this, take that off. I think what they mean, and again, yes, I'm sure there's lots of you going, huh, you're going to put the grommets through there? I know the grommets normally go through these, but uh, on this occasion, the picture says otherwise. But let's shove the grommets through here first, because this is the, the logical way, isn't it? What they show in the picture is actually this underneath and then the grommet on top with the screw going through it. Screw as they call it. The M3 cap head bolt. I should say. Right. Let's pop those four in there. Come back. There's always one. There we are. Four of those. Then let's slide the standoffs in. Yeah, they're a tough fit, but that, that makes more sense. That's that's isolation. Before it was not isolation, that was nonsense. Okay. It's almost worth getting some silicon lube for some of these. They're a bit... Not tricky to get in, but they are a little bit sticky. You could lick them, I suppose, if you're into that sort of thing. Let's make sure these are all going to the bottom. Okay, there's four of those. That's better. One, two, three, four. We'll nip these up. There we have it one assembled frame and that is strong yeah really pleased with that the, the instructions are relatively clear um, if I can do it you guys can do it so that's looking really really tidy next up is going to be putting in the stack uh, so getting in the flight controller and the ESC getting them paired up together and uh, I'll make that the next section so uh, so now, we are looking good. On to the next bit. Right. Next bit. Let's whip all this off again. And get the ESC on there. Start putting the stack together. Once the ESC is on there, we can smash on some motors and wire them in, solder them in, get them nice and neat, and go from there. So, try and put these back in the box, because I will lose them. If you're like me, you end up losing something. It's it's the second you go out and buy a replacement, you find the original. Oh, thanks for that. Very useful, huh? Okay. So I've no idea what time the O3 unit is turning up today, but I did buy it from Amazon. DJI have an Amazon store, so why wouldn't you? Um, it's the same price as everyone else. They, they, they prevent people, apparently, from selling them uh, above what they should be. Right, let's have a look at this Razer LED. Luminaire. Very pretty. Now, I'm going to get out the flight controller as well, because I want to see which way round all this stuff's going to go, and how I'd like it orientated. So, you know, this stack is obviously going to sit in here a certain way. And depending on which way it wants to go, yeah, it comes very close to these 
these here. Now, to me, that looks like it might be a bit of an issue because if it's hitting these standoffs, we're going to be getting vibrations. through the posts which we really don't want yeah now look at that that is definitely very very close so this edge of the board here is actually up against these posts and I feel like I need to file off the edge of the board just to be able to get these to sit on there correctly yeah, it seems incredibly close. And they are just gently rubbing on there. I'm sure it will go with a a bit of a file, but do I want to file off this board? And more importantly, can I? Let's take the goggles off and take a look. So there are ridges on here that can disappear uh, from the manufacturing. And then outside of that, uh, we've got the pads. It's a multi-layer board, so we can't take off really too much of the edge in case there's something that's important in there. But I feel like we need to grind some at the back. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go grab a file and uh, we'll take some of that off. So, Right, got a little file. Um, it is a metal file, so we're probably going to end up making this a little bit messy, but it's kind of what we've got to work with. So I'm going to start by backing off these screws because one they're not locked tight anyway <laughs> and two means we can have the uh, the board placed lower in the chassis and then we can wind the I keep calling them screws because I read them as screws the bolts we can wind them through the ESC as we need to but we're going to have to file off a little section of the board. Nothing too drastic, hopefully just the, the little serrated edge from the manufacturing. The serrated edge is where all the boards are joined together, they just snap them off so as they all go through the, uh, the solder flow ovens and everything else, all the boards are joined and then they just get snapped off into their individual boards as part of the manufacturing process and it leaves behind these little serrations which you can just see on the end of the board there and that's what we want to get rid of so we'll start first of all just by gently filing them away and uh, see how flat we can make that part of the board without going too far into the board That file is bent. Okay, that's nice and smooth. So we're flat, flush with the board there, flush with the LEDs. Um, there's probably a, an ever so slight amount between the LEDs. But let's see if that will actually fit in here now to begin with. Oh, look at that, I've done the wrong side. I've done the side that doesn't matter. Well, the good news is they're nice and flush. Let's do the side that matters. This is going well. Not a huge amount of pressure. I'm not uh, not reshaping metal here. So with all these multi-layer boards, you never know. I mean, it would be very, very bad practice to put tracks in as part of the sandwich that close to the edge. It would be very unlikely because they're more likely to get damaged by the uh, <coughs> by the removal by the separation process in the factory. But uh, still, let's see how that sits in there now. It sits good. It's just ever so slightly on the very edge, catching. So I'm just going to take a little nick off of each edge. There's no LED to worry about there, so I'm going to go just the other side of the LED and bring this in, as you can see, just ever so slightly. I'm going to start to 
touch the pad. Yeah, we're just going into the pad ever so slightly there. Now, which which pad is that? Let's have a look. LED. Okay, I think we can live with that. to that pad as well ever so slightly so now you can see we've got uh, the ever so slightly rounded we have touched a bit of the pad I'm not too fussed because they're just LED pads but we've gone maybe two tenths of a millimetre into the pad Dong. and that sits in there it's uh, let's take the old goggles off again it's just slightly touching a little bit further in so we're nearly there bit more clearance and we'll be good so let's go further in and bring that down to the same pretty much the same level as the outer looks okay that looks okay Still no, I can't see any copper. Just starting to see some copper exposed now. So I've got to, I've got to stop there. And that is free from from touching now. So I can just start to see a little bit of copper being exposed on some of the tracks. And yeah. What I might have to do is just give that a little bit of a clean up and make sure I haven't touched anything that's important. It doesn't look like it, it just looks like the edge of the pads. Okay, yeah it is, just looking at it, there's a little bit of the pad from top to bottom, that's fine. Wind these through. Now we're going to have LEDs up. Oh, I guess so. I'm only really going to use the LEDs for. I'm not going to use them for anything. Is there anything on the board that I need to access on the other side? It's a good point. Which way up shall I have this board? don't know. Actually, whilst I'm here, let's have a look at some of these standoffs to see if there's another way of maybe changing this layout. I don't think there is. Because I could technically remove this upright and place in different standoffs, a nut at the bottom and then a nut halfway up to get these standoffs even further back from the board. It would involve removing these standoffs. Let's try it on one side and, and see what happens because you know, exposed copper, it's it's very close. I see that's not gonna work, is it? So I'd need to put in some very long uprights. Then we're starting to mess with the actual chassis. Yeah, it's annoyingly close. Right, well, we just have to push forward. Okay, let's pull him off out of there. that'll be okay what I might do is just put a bit of varnish across there some clear nail varnish uh, or something and I could take a little nick out of here as well I don't think it's going to touch you know they're very close but as you know with things that are very close they can become too close 
oh so quickly. But for now, for now we'll just push forward. Right. So on my build, which way up am I going to have that board? Which way up is it recommended? I mean, I should really have it this way up. I think um, the LEDs are there, the put the buttons on this side, so it really has to go in that way round. So let's take our cable. If you had the right cable, Johnny, and uh, pop that in. Make sure it's the right way round. Make sure it's the right cable. Okay. Then we will pop that back in there. Bring the screws through. Just enough. It's kind of annoying it doesn't sit in there. Unless I'm missing something, which I really don't think I am, I'm surprised that this sticks out as far as it does. Now let's put my battery connectors obviously over here, so I'm going to have to have them routed somewhere uh, to get them out of the way. I mean, the other option is obviously to have this facing towards the back, but if I have this towards the back, then these TPU mounts uh, are then even further in the way, interfering with the board. So it's um, it's very annoying, and that does feel like it's still interfering. I almost feel like I need to lathe off a section. In fact, that might not be a bad idea. Maybe I should pop these in the lathe and just take a section off um, if I measure how far. They need to be off from the standoff, is 5.2 millimeters to say 3.2. 3.2 to 5.2. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to take a section out of these. It won't look pretty, but I'm just I'm just concerned about these being so close to the metal and that is inevitably going to rub. And if there is exposed copper on there, which there is, it's going to short out, which I don't want. So, I'm going to get these standoffs in the lathe and take off from 3.2 to 5.2. I'm going to take off about 1 mm around the post. Yeah, it won't look pretty. Um I'll probably put some black paint on it, but for now I think that's uh the best option. So let's go and hit the lathe downstairs. And do a bit of whizzy, spinny, metal flying stuff. Here we are, my trusty Warco <coughs> WM180. Don't judge, it's filthy. Um, don't judge. So, what I'd like to do is get a standoff. This one needs six hands. Gonna stand off in here without making too much of a mess of it. And then I'm gonna use the DRO on this. So let's, let's get you squared up for what I wanna do. What am I doing here? I'm taking off I don't know what that facing, I want that faced about there. I'm gonna set this square on the DRO. I'm gonna go 3.2 to 5.2 with a little bit of leeway and just remove some material. So I'm going to zero out the DRO, so we're on the top, on the X axis, I'm going to come in to 3.2-ish, go 3.1 to 5.3 thereabouts, and set you off. Okay. from three four mil and my DRO stop working
Okay, let's see how that looks. And uh, you can see there we've taken a little, little chomp out of it. Let's go a little bit deeper actually. gone from we'll re-zero from there uh, and say we're going to 2.67 right let's get the other one in there so that looks all right we've got a little little recess in there now enough to give that board some clearance let's go a bit more let's go a little bit more I feel like we just need a smidge more. Reset Y. That looks like a nice amount. Okay, I'm happy with that. Uh, right, I'll go ahead and get the other one done and then uh, get back up to the build table. Right, there we have it. Two little machined parts with a dip out of them. Yeah, well, they're not black, but they look alright. So let's screw him in and it clears the board nicely. It doesn't look too shabby. And again, the same on that side. We're clearing the board, look. It's a bit closer on that side, but again, we're clear of the board. That's all I care about. So. <clears throat> That's gonna be my ESC position. Now, I'll pop this on here for now. I'm also going to remove it because I need to do some soldering, but I want to get an idea of how the stack's going to look um, and how it's all going to plug together. So we've got that there on the side. Let's give it a twist. Might be ne neater if I solder in the flight controller to the ESC otherwise we're going to have this horrible cable kind of doing its thing there which I suppose isn't that bad but I've seen neater so so flight controller and ESC are going to sit there like that it gives me enough room to put in the connection for the DJI 03 so that's all good. That oh, is an Amazon notification for my stuff. It's out for delivery. Okay, and that leaves the, yeah, the connector there for the DJI. And I can coil that up and make it neat and have minimal wires elsewhere. So that's kind of what it's going to look like. Right, the next section then is, uh, I'll pop this back off, is to mount the motors and uh, get them wired in nice and neat. So uh, let me... get the motors ready, get them installed and sold it in. Right, motors. Let's get all the motors. Move some other bits out of the way for now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mount uh, one of the motors, and then, uh, that's a lie, I'm going to mount them all. 
then, where's the hardware? There it is. And then we're going to go ahead and solder them. So whilst it's happening, I'm going to turn my soldering iron on. On power switch. Where are you? There you are. Let's have that powered up. Make sure we don't melt any cables. Good. That needs to clean. Get nice and hot. So I'm going to run 480 on the uh, soldering iron because I want to be in there and out nice and quick. I uh, don't want to be hanging around. <clears throat> I'm going to start with probably this motor here. So let's get it mounted. I'm going to have uh, all these Amazon notifications going off in the background. Okay. okay I'm going to check the depth of these screws. They're bolts. And uh, yeah, I will. I will definitely use Loctite on these ones. But for now, you know the depth is okay without any feet on there. I think that uh, whatever depth these are, they look like they're about ten mil. Let's check. No, they're not there. Seven mil. 7mm seems to be okay for this chassis without the feet on it, but as soon as you add feet in, then these motors, you know, the penetration into the threads, you said penetration, uh, penetration into the threads is not going to be enough, it's not going to be much enough engagement, so that's going to have to, uh, we're going to basically have to put longer bolts on it. That's fine. Longer bolts. But for now, without the feet, let's just get them fixed in place get the wiring put in, make everything happy. Because yeah, if you look at look at these as an example, we're going to be adding in another three millimeters. So we're going to need a 10, 10.2 millimeters longer. So we're going to end up with a, a much longer screw. We're going to have a, a requirement for a longer bolt, I'll call it a bolt. Okay, they're in there on one. So, do I do them all? Let's pop them all on first and then we can just bolt them all on, do all the soldering, all in one go. Otherwise I'll be forever cleaning the iron. Okay. Number two. I did warn you it was going to be a long video. If you're still here, congratulations. So I'm hoping I don't uh, stove this into the ground the first time I take it out. My confidence has been getting the better of me lately. So I've uh, been having a really good day, really enjoying flying pulling off some really sweet smooth moves and then trying to continue that into the next day and then having a, a disastrous day. So today, no flying just yet. I think we'll give that a bit of a rest. Well, this is going well. Let's try that again. There we are. Yeah, I think even even these M3 cap head bolts are on the shorter side. They could be dealing with another millimetre longer. Uh, I'm sure there are some separate ones in this pack. There are uh, two different types left over. And there is one which comes out at... 12.87 millimeters so that would actually be ideal with the feet so uh, should we just do that let's just do one of them with the feet oh, this guy's wasting our time not on purpose just not happy with those even just just holding it in there without the foot so I'd much rather Try and get the right thing from the get-go. Right, let's empty all these out. 
12, 16. Right, there's enough of them, which is, is always good news. Okay, let's let's pop one of these on with the feet and we'll check the engagement of the screw. So again, we're just going to put the whole stack together, hold that in there, put that on top. Now that looks good to me. That comes, it just comes out the other edge of... Oh, which way around do they go? Decisions. It just comes out the other edge of the motor, which is kind of ideal. You could put a split washer in if you wanted. I'm not going to for now because these motors are most likely going to come off. And I'm going to pop on my TPU feet. If I can get them to print properly. Yeah, so I've got about ooh, one millimeter protruding out the other side. And, and for me, that's good. Uh, it's not going to interfere with the motor by the look of it. It's not going to interfere with the magnets. It's just popping out the other side, so we've got full thread engagement. I'm much happier with that as opposed to uh, those shorter bolts. They just, yeah, they didn't make me feel happy. And have you guys ever had a motor come off mid flight? Can't imagine that's much fun. Right, so do these sit in the center nicely already? They seem good. Let's torque them up. Three fingers on there. Lovely. Alright, let's do this other side. I don't know whether I should print out some little wire protectors. What I'll probably do with the wires is have them in such a way that the leading edge of the prop is going to hit the carbon fibre. So I'll put the wiring on the other side. So if I get a bent prop or something, it's going to smash into the frame as opposed to cutting the wires. I can replace an arm, but. Um, if a prop smashes it, it's less likely to do damage. If I smash a, uh, and these are just my thoughts, but yeah, if I, if I end up smashing uh, a motor wire, and then it's going to cause me more headaches than just having to uh, a little nick out of an arm, isn't it? So I imagine I'll I'll run these down the side of the arm. Let's run them down the top. Just take the risk and maybe print out some some covers don't know yet although I better make up my mind because that will determine the wire length for the motors because of course if I'm going to have them I'm going to have these going props out so they're going to be coming in on the sides so do I run the wires down the arm and up or do I go straight across the arm you know what, I think I'm going to go straight across the arm and then I will print out some nice little arm caps. Yeah, I just I think it looks neater. Yeah, I'll tape them. Right, where is my cloth tape? There it is. Don't need to tape them now, but... Gonna use some Tessa tape. I think it looks quite neat. And uh, I've always used this on wiring looms on motorcycles and cars. And when it gets wet, it actually gets more sticky. Unlike electrical tape, which falls apart. Not that I'm suggesting you should get anything wet, but it's just nice to know that if it does get wet, it doesn't lose all of its stick. Make sure I keep the wire order. Don't want them out of phase. There we are. Looks pretty neat. Okay. One, two, three, one, two, three. Let's do the other side. Okay. 
Same with these, just going to grab some feet, use those longer bolts, attach them in with the making the same way. They have to be the same way. These feet, uh, no, they're not directional, it's just they've got a pattern on them. And I would find it annoying if the pattern didn't go the same way on all four feet. The struggle is real, people. The struggle is real. Okay, there's the first one. Let's get the second one in. Your package is near. How exciting. So that'll be some 12 gauge wire, the DJI 03 unit, um, a bunch of capacitors that I don't need. Pretty useful. And some black TPU, so I can print out some lovely black bits. There's three. Oh, it's looking good. Get some tape on this one. Them neat. There we are. Round once. And is it long enough to go under? No. Right. No good. Factory look in. Okay, next. And final motor. So the motor wiring, it's like any other motor, your center wire is always going to be the central wire. The outer wires are going to be the alternate phasing. So, with my experience so far with Beta Flight, you can change the direction, it's going to change the phasing on those motors. I would assume, and this is an assumption, from all the builds that I've seen, where you have wire 1, 2, and 3 as they come out, as long as those wires are in the same order on the flight, on the ESC, the phasing is correct. Meaning the center is always the center, it's just the left and right, or one and three, which is, uh, is going to be different. So, oh, if I blow a motor up, I blow a motor up. But I don't think you're going to, I'm not going to blow it up from getting the wiring wrong, which is like an awful racket. Spin backwards. Okay, right, let's clean the soldering iron off. Get some resin on the tip. Give it a clean. Tin up the tip. And then we'll solder the six first. So, not quite hot enough. There we go. So for those of you that never had the joy of working with actual tin solder, it was way easier to work with. Had lower melting temperature, flowed way better. It was generally quite a pleasure Whereas all this new stuff, I get it that we, you know, it has to, we can't add lead in it anymore, unfortunately. Um, it just seems to be a real pain. Wow. This is not going well. 
There's something going on with my iron here. It says 480 degrees, but it's definitely not happy. Let's get in here a bit closer, see what the hell's going on, because this looks like a right pickle. See if I can neaten some of this up. Gonna have to hover a long time on the pad to get some heat into it. It looks like the the pad is taking an awful lot of heat away. quiet whilst doing this it's just I've not quite seen sort of gone as badly as this before okay not my proudest moment so let's just get these cut to length so I want to give them a little bit of a leeway. Now, do I come on board first and then round a corner, or do I just go straight onto these? I think I'll just come straight onto them. So I'll snip them relatively close. Let's get these bound onto the onto the arms first, because I don't want to snip them too short, but also I don't want them too long. I kind of want them where they where they're happy being. So let's pop some tape on. We'll have uh, enough in there to give it a bit of a bend. So we'll come around for the first, second, and third in line like that. And we will snip. Third. The world's worst snippers. Second, I've got some more in order. First, okay, there we go. So Let's peel the ends off. With any good quality wire, it's so easy to strip them. He says, screwing up the third strip compared to um, cheap crap. Right, I may have overloaded the pads ever so slightly, so I'm going to have to go very light on the solder for these. Don't want it going everywhere. Just lightly tin up the cables. There we are. I'm going to do the far one first. So, apologies if you can't see much. But uh, it's not that exciting. One, now the center, that one's not happy, let's add a bit of soldering on this one. To a very fine balance. 
on these pads as to how much solder they actually want put too much on and it seems to soak all the heat away put too little on and it just doesn't like it one two three okay that's looking relatively neat I've got enough of a gap there that it looks tidy there's enough strain relief on there that all the wires sit quite neatly again not the best soldering job in the world but there's good strain relief on the cables and it looks neat and tidy <coughs> that's all I'm aiming for or that and to make sure they're not shorted out at least that would be a bonus alright next set of cables let's go ahead and pop more cloth tape on there we are okay so for this lot again same thing we're just gonna bunch them up pull them back a bit to give them a bit of space on the length I'm going to go one, two, three. Okay, lengths look good. Oops, stuff going everywhere. Bare the ends. Two. Three. There we are. I don't want to twist them or anything because I find twisting them prevents take up of solder. At least it does in my experience. So if I can get away with bearing them and tinning them as is, then I will definitely do that. Right, up nice and close again. Apologies if you can't see, but I'd rather have a nice solder on here. So let's start with... One, two, three. Which one shall I do first? Let's do you first. Let's try applying a bit more pressure this time. That's a happier solder. A bit more pressure. That's what he likes. Okay, more pressure. bad. Last one. Oh, that's not gone well. Right. That went a bit misshapen with the pressure. So try again too much pressure oh, yeah that was hot going in twice double dip blinking hot right let's push those cables in make them look tidy They're a bit longer on this side. I think it matters, they're still pretty tidy. Um, and that's one side done, as you can see there. Right. Next. Well, 
more cloth tape. Tape. One, two, three cables. Not stretchy, this cloth stuff. But it does look neat. Look at that. Okay, so right, with these pads, I'm just going to put on less, slightly less onto the pad. I'm going to make sure this is absolutely boiling. I'm at 480. It was still soaking up the heat. I think that really means I could do with a bit of a thicker point on the soldering iron to retain a bit more heat. But um, it's a bit late to swap it out now. So let's just push forward with this. Get as much heat onto these pads as I can. Yeah, see that side is way better. It's the strangest surface. It's almost like it wants to just skid off. Anyway, load of pressure. Let's just get them on there. Last one. Okay. It's just a little nick on this one that I don't like. I'll go around with the multimeter and test them shortly, make sure that none of them are directly shorted. And they look good, but it's always good to check, isn't it? It's always best to check. It's always best to check. Okay, one, two, three, let's get them in order. Give me a bit Anyway, then we'll go one. Two. Three. Off one smooth two three is that loose? Sure, it's fine. Tin one, tin two. In three. I'm going to move to a different, um, different solder. So the differences between these two, both Model A, one's a 0.6 diameter, one's 0.8, both got 2% flux, They're both 6337s. I'm going to move to a, a thinner. Just because I can see a lot of uh, a lot of resin, a lot of flux coming out of that last one. I'm not sure that's really what I need. Whoops! There's the camera. I don't like it. So let's go in end first. And where's my goggles? Can I do this with tweezers? I can find tweezers. No, be a man. Burn your fingers. Burn them till they hurt.
So hot. First one on, second one going on. Bit of pressure. Lovely. Third one going on. With a stray on that one. Let's get that tidied up. Yes, yeah, the strangest thing. They kind of, these pads, they. With the solder take up, they they can slide around when it gets hot. It's like the pad just rejects the solder. That's another one that's gone a bit wrong. So now I'm going to have to heat that pad up and shovel the solder. It's literally sliding around on there. Not good. Okay, let me tin up that pad again. Get some more resin in there. No, it just comes off. Look, this is the. The strangest soldering surface I've, I've really come across. I've done a fair amount of soldering. I'm not. I don't purport to be particularly fantastic at it, but this is the strangest thing. I mean, could I've cleaned the pads before soldering? Yeah, there is that possibility, um, but you kind of wouldn't have expected to. There is something. Is there a massive heat sink on here somewhere? Something is just soaking, either soaking or the heat up. Let's just get this solder off. It's very frustrating. Try going in at both sides because I'm trying to get more tip contact onto the pad because it's almost like it's cooling down too quick. Right. You can get away from there, you cheeky monkey. Let's take off number two now because that's and number one. Because we're all starting to kind of melt together. Uh, this is very frustrating. Try and tidy up some of the solder here. It's a shame I can't show you I don't have a, a lens that can show you this in any more detail which is a bit annoying. as much of this solder as I can. Try and get the pads to the point where they're happy. Because right now they're not happy. Right, pad one's looking good. Pad two is now tidy. Pad three is okay, so let's try popping these back on. One. Two. 
referee's looking a bit sorry for himself. Let's just turn around. Referee's hot. Yeah, it's interesting. It must be to do with the the heat dissipation capacity of this board because when I'm putting on the solder onto the wires, it goes on really well. When I'm actually trying to attach them onto the board, the heat is just disappearing. It's just going away. Possibly the worst soldering job I've ever done. <coughs> In fact, it's so bad. I'm going to check to see if I've got continuity. Yes, it is that bad. And of course, I can't check if there's continuity because, you idiot, it's a wound coil. Right, well, I'm just going to have to go through them. Very carefully with my eyeballs. So if any of you are thinking, oh, I'm glad it's not just me that has trouble with this, you'd be absolutely right. I'm not happy with that third one. He's got to come off. And I can't see a damn thing. More fresh solder on to clear it up, and then we'll jog it clean. Let's make this one a bit shorter. Good job I had a bit of spare. Okay, that's okay for now. Not my proudest moment, but it will do. Right, next lot. One, two, three. And then strip them off. One, two, three. Turn them up. circuit board. Let's be friends. Needs a lot of heat. Right, come on. Two. 
Two's good. One's good. visual inspection make sure they're all separated uh, I mean the front right motor is not the neatest solder at all in fact it really is quite horrific but I'm pretty sure with a brush and a clean up it should be alright so let's get these motor wires tucked in like the others gotta make them look neat I mean, why start now right and the same with these let's just get them over that way one two three yeah it doesn't look too bad apart from that really chewy one there which I might just have a quick quick blast on Right, let's just uh, go between these to make sure there's no shorting. There is stuff going everywhere. No, it's just resin in between those two. There is a gap in between those. That looks okay. That's all resin. That's all resin. Okay, I think, despite it looking like a pig's ear. We'll chip away some of that, that's just resin, they are clear, there's a gap in between, we're looking good, it's not pretty but it's there, right, <laughs> happier with that now, right, power cable have got to come in later, unless I've got, mm. here, nope, so I'll do the power cable later with some 12 gauge, uh, and I think that's it now for the motor wiring and the ESC. Next up, might as well get this connected in. Take a peek as to where the wiring goes. Wiring on the bottom, wiring on the bottom. Help you get the right plug as well, wouldn't it, Johnny? Uh, yeah, we're good. is to get a few twists in on that and then pop that in place looking good there so let's wind these through and see what our stack is looking like enough clearance in between the two there's two silicon mounts butting up against each other so that uh, should give us enough clearance I think we'll get this bit done and then I will need to have a quick tidy up and we'll move on to the next bits which will be the Caddx 
not the Cadix. What's going this? The O3 unit. And uh, the battery connections and and everything else. Right, so there we have it. Motors are on. They're wired in. ESC is in there. We have that all nicely connected. Let's just give that another couple of twists, I think. Take up some of the slack. There we are. That sits in there quite nicely now. Uh, so I'm going to get on and send off or, or create a new STL file for a different bracket for the rear there for the antenna. On that note, if this one will work with a zip tie then great. Let's have a look at how that might sit in there. So it, it could sit in there, but I think I'll just go ahead and make a another one and print it out. This looks like it's for the style where there's no plastic, you just get the, the antennas. This is a bit more chunky. Um to be a bit more resilient. So either that or I'll find somewhere else to zippy tie it. Maybe up here somewhere. Might look nice up there. We'll see. I'll find somewhere to stick that. Get that all plumbed in. So yeah, next up, uh, I'm gonna wait for the bits to arrive and we'll chop into the next section which will be adding in the XT60, putting the rest of the frame together, powering up and seeing how it goes. Right, well, it's even more of a pickle now, isn't it? So, after my swearing match with the um, with the power cables and uh, not having a thick enough soldering iron tip, it's entirely my fault and I'll have to redo those. I've managed to get them on there. It's not pretty, it didn't flow properly, but they're on there they're not dry but they're not they're not brilliant but they're on there so consider it done and what I'm going to look at next is mounting the ELRS uh, ground 5 transmit receive so on this we have ground 5 transmit receive transmit is Yellow receive is green. Other way around. Ground five. There we are. Ground five. Transmit receive. So got to work out which you are to put this on. Uh, I'm probably going to put it on four. Ground five R four TX four. And it's just a matter of where it's actually going to going to go. Now there's going to be some space behind the camera. So I might end up popping this in here, uh, if it will go. It might not be a bad place for it at all, actually. But I'll work out where the antennas go later. Let's let's for now just get all this wired in and soldered in. So first thing we could do: chop the plugs off. Look at this disgusting mess. Chop. With the world's worst side cutters, they really are horrific. Let's just prune these wires. Yeah, that's not gone well. Now I've got ground that's shorter than everything else. Okay. Take them off. Now let's uh let's do these from should we do them from the bottom up? Have them rooted through. We'll do them from the bottom up and have them rooted through. I think it might look a little bit neater. Probably redo them anyway at some point, but can I get that through there? No. Right, well there's your answer. No, we're not gonna do it that way. <laughs> well, let's just pop them in one by one as neatly as we can for now. More soldering. You guys must be thrilled. It's so exciting. At least those little pads solder okay. <laughs> Honestly. It's been a good soldering iron. This that's the first time I've had troubles with it. 
not been able to get enough heat into it. Then again, I don't think it's necessarily the iron. I think it's just the fact that the the board is clearly very good at dissipating heat. But it's working alright for this, so that's fine. Come on, stay in there. Five volt transmit is yellow, so it goes on to receive. I think four is free. Yeah, guess we'll find out. Six could be for Bluetooth if I ever stick it on. Uh, so transmit is yellow. Am I doing this right? Yes. There we go. Receive. Bloop. A little bit dry back there. There we are. Soaking it all up. And last one. This is receive on here. So it gets transmit on four. So, any of you guys done your own builds before? Any of you thinking of doing your own builds, or you know, what's the what's the situation? Let me know. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'd just be genuinely interested to see what you guys are up to um, and what you've done before, or what you haven't. You know, why are you here? Why are you why are you watching this? That's the question, isn't it? Why are you here? Um, gotta find something nice to mount that. We've got all the DJI kit back here. I'm half tempted to have the antenna somewhere up the front to give it a bit more, a bit more space. You know, somewhere kind of there-ish might be nice. I wonder if there's any double-sided tape in amongst this beautiful mess that I have. Yeah, probably got some somewhere. Anyway, let's uh, heat shrink that for now, and we will stick it down with something later. I presume it's heat shrink. It is. Got it on 200 degrees. It's enough to get a reasonably speedy response. Well, not so much that it melts absolutely everything. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. Mm. Mm, more wires, fantastic. Okay. So from where we are now, you could probably put on a little connector. Let's put on a a connector for now. Kind of don't need to do this. And I'll probably redo it because it'll be the wrong size. But for now, let's just get on an XT60 so we can power it up and check for, as always, magic smoke. Hope we haven't got any. Especially with those, that dodgy wiring, dodgy soldering. Okay, so how long do we want this? Let's let's make this crazy long to begin with. Ooh, have them both the same length. Probably redo all the battery wiring later with some some thick. I think this is 14 gauge. No 12 gauge. It might be 12 gauge. I'm not sure. 
What does it say in the box? Wire. Well, that was very descriptive. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's uh, it's wire. It will do for now. I'm not going to be flying it with this because I want to redo those connections anyway. This is really to make sure that everything is working correctly first. So, let's go ahead and get this on there. Um, help if I pick the right connector, wouldn't it? No, no, no. Yes, one of them. Okay. Just got to double check, make sure I get the connectors right on these. Wire it backwards, that'll be great fun. Okay, let's, um, let's get this filled with solder. Plenty of heat going into this chunky cable. Look at that. Loads of heat. Perfect. That's why I'm struggling to understand why this is so difficult. I just don't get it. Yeah, loads of heat on that. Went straight on. Loved it. Lapped it up. Maybe it's just something on the board. That's just taking all the heat. Where does that want to sit? It wants to sit there. That'd be a nice angle for soldering. There we go. Wait for it to suck in. Good. Solid. No, not solid. Not good. Redo. There we go. It's my son's favourite noise. I keep making it now as well. He's uh he's just two and he's learning to speak. But in learning to speak he finds it quite amusing to add in in the middle of his words. Oh, I love it when Heat Shrink does that. So he'll be saying, uh, you know, Daddy, and he'll just add in a little. Bless him. Let's stretch that out again because it's too eager. It shrunk a little bit off the heat. A pet hate. Okay, can't quite get it all the way in the connector, but it's looking all right. So let's heat shrink that. Right. Now I guess we can check for magic smoke. I'll get a. I don't have a, a, a smoke saver or anything, so I've got a battery at twenty-two and a half volts. Success. So let's see what happens. Ooh. Let's see what happens. No flames, no smoke, lots of LEDs. Looking good. Do we have power to the we have power to the ELRS? Okay, that's a result. Let's plug in the cable and plug in. Let's see if there's a longer cable somewhere. That will do. That one will do. So here we are in beta flight and um, I haven't done any configuring in here other than just go straight onto motors while well, I've checked the ports. So we've got the USB VCP set, we've got UART1 set as serial RX for now, we've got UART3 set uh, for... what is that set for? I don't know why that's set. Let's turn that off. We'll have UART4 
which is our uh, radio, our ELRS set. We've also got our ESC on UART 2. So, save and reboot that. <laughs> Gonna chirp out the motors, which is good. Let's go to the motors. We've got motor direction reversed. Reorder the motors. Let's go start. I'm gonna check on them now. That's rear right. That's front right. Rear left. Front left. That's good. Save and reboot. Now we're going and do the motor direction. Do the wizard. And number four, number one. So number one is spinning the wrong way. So that's now spinning outwards. Number two is going correct direction. Number four is not going in the direction the arrows show. Now it is. So is number three. Fantastic. We're up and running. Um, I've got that on D-Shot 600. With ESC sensor over a separate wire. I've got bi-directional D-Shot enabled as well. 14 motor poles and 4.5% motor idle. Not going 3D. No, 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 no. Bad, 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 bad. Okay, so the next bit would be to see if we can get some basic... Ooh, what shall we do next? Let me hop over to ELRS and see if we can get that working. Before we do that, we'll go to the config, the receiver, serial, change this to... Crossfire and enable telemetry. Save and reboot, and we'll go in and configure ELRS next. So let me hop to that window. Okay, let's before we do that get the port configured properly. Like an idiot, uh, I've got it set up wrong. I want Serial RX on UART4 because that's where we're running Serial uh, to for our. Express LRS. Let's get this right. So UART1 is currently disabled. This is where the video is going to be. We'll enable that when we come to it. The ESC is on UART2. Nothing on 3. UART4 Serial RX for the Express LRS. So let's save that. Now we can dip into Express LRS and give that a flash. Right, so let's hop over to that window. Okay. So Express LRS is up. I'm running 3.1.2 on all of my Express LRS. I've not updated yet to 3.2. So uh, I'm going to continue with 3.1.2 for now. And then I'll update everything as and when. The model is a Hermes Express LRS. So I'm going to select HGLRC 2.4. And the Hermes 2400 receiver. Use beta flight pass through. Standard mode. Set your domains, set your Wi-Fi password, your binding phrase and everything else. Select your COM port and then flash. So it's going to go ahead and pull all of the stuff it needs, all the dependencies, binaries. It will compile that and then flash it through. He says, as it fails. Well, let's find out why that's failed. Most likely, it is because, let's go back into Beta Flight, ports, UART4 serial, let's disconnect and then go back into Express LRS. Let's go back, COM6, build and flash. Could be because the port was still open in beta flight, so I've closed that port off and we'll see how it does. <clears throat> it seems to be a little bit hit and miss. This is probably what I, I'm probably doing something wrong, but um, oh, there we go. See, it's working this time, so it must have just been because the port was still open uh, with beta flight. So let's wait for that to. Finish flashing. There we go. Right, let's head back into beta flight. So we know back now back in beta flight, 
and see if it will connect. Might need to. Yep, yeah, I'll re plug the flight controller back in and see what we've got. Here we are. Right. What I am going to do though is. Is there any PID tuning or anything on here? Everything looks stock in here. So, what I'll most likely do is go ahead and do a firmware update. Let's go RC5, full chip arrays, don't want core only, I've got enough space on this F7 board. We will load the firmware online and we will flash it. So it pops into DFU mode, you can see that in the top right. Just going to go ahead and flash the firmware and once that's done, we can do a base config again on the unit so we can get it ready for its first flight. I do need to still configure the DJI 03 camera. That is going to be turning up anywhere from between an hour and, I don't know when, an hour and three hours from now, which is annoying. I want to get it done, but hopefully I'll get to fly this tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. Right, let's connect back in, apply the custom defaults. Okay, so first thing to do, I'm going to do the accelerometer, it's on a known flat-ish surface, so that will do. Let's check out the ports, we want to turn off serial on UART1 and we'll put serial on UART4, um, like so, let's save and reboot, let's go onto the receiver, Crossfire, enable telemetry, save and reboot. Let's power the radio on. Welcome to HTX. Acro mode. Turtle mode off. There we are. Disarmed. Off. So let's go to the receiver now and just see if we've got any... Nothing coming through the receiver right now. But that could be. Let's check. It is powered up. But for some reason we haven't bound or we've done something a little bit wrong. Let's go back and check the ports out again. Four is our serial RX and I'll just double check on here. We do have four. Okay, let's reboot the drone. Sometimes I find the the receiver has to come up after the transmitter's already powered on. Could be that. see there we go magic okay that's looking really good so we've got remote working what else do we need to do let's get the motors working so we're going to do a reverse motor direction have the blades out on this one I quite like running that way uh, just because if I hit something it kind of bounces me out the way rather than dragging me in <clears throat> but also it means that I get less crud on the screen uh, sorry on, on the camera lens because uh, the crud tends to then hit the side of the quad so I'm happy with that I'm going to go for D-Shot 600 I'm uh, going to use the BL Heli 32 SC telemetry over a separate wire because it supports that and I'm going to run bi-directional D-Shot so I've got to have RPM filtering enabled I'm going to stick the idle down at four and a half save and reboot next up gonna go to my motors and reorder the motors first make sure they're in the right order helps if I stick a battery on okay I can see the rear right spinning now I can see the front right now the rear left and the front left except I've got it all backwards because it's facing the wrong way that is the front left, don't want to get that wrong front left rear left front right rear right well that would have been interesting wouldn't it let's save that and then we'll check the directions motor direction Let's use the wizard. 
So, I'm going to check the, the motors are spinning in line with the arrows. We can see this is anti-clockwise, clockwise, and so on. So I'll check one first. One is spinning the wrong way. So we'll reverse it. So one's correct. Three is correct. Four is not correct. Now four is correct. And two is correct. So we're good. We are good. Right. That's pretty much it for setting up this basic stuff. Let's set up some ranges for arming. Armed. Disarmed. Armed. So if arms going to be there, let's have this all the way over here. Armed and disarmed. disarmed. Armed. Great. Angle. Mode we want angle mode over here. Then we want horizon mode horizon to be mode. here. Acro mode. Acro mode is both of those off. Heads we don't need. Fail safe. We'll add a range. Don't actually. Let's not have that. Should we have fail safe configured, or shall I configure? No, we won't. While doing so, I'll configure. Uh, we'll come to it in a sec. Buzzer active. Buzzer on aux eight. What I'm doing to get the get it to move over, I'm just putting it on auto, putting this on auto, and then flipping Buzzer the switch active. that I want, and it's auto assigning the switch. It's really cool. Telemetry black box, angle mix, camera control, flip over after crash. Let's add that in. Turtle mode on. Turtle mode. Let's have that there. Turtle mode on. Great stuff. What else we got? BP mute ready. Uh, okay, that should do it for now. I should add something in for a failsafe. Let's add in something for a failsafe. Return to home. Usually that's return to home. I'll have failsafe on. Ooh, am I going to stick GPS on this? Probably don't need to. In all reality, let's have failsafe on that switch. There we are. Anything I'm missing? OSD disabled? No, don't need that. Black box? No. Camera one, two, no. Pre-arm? No. All the other stuff? No. Speaking of black box, let's go two kilohertz. Gyro. Gyro stabilized. Gyro scaled. Two kilohertz. One quarter on the serial port. Let's do that. Let's have some logging, and we'll use the login to um, to set the filters and so on as we move forward. So, last thing to check on here. is gyro rpm filters they're enabled we'll leave all this as static for now and we'll fly it on its normal settings i'm going to stick in my rates as well uh, my rates are they're definitely not race flight they are beta flight rates and let's dig them out because I can't remember them. They are uh, 129, 146, so 1.46, 0.42, and 0.21. No, that's not right. 0.72 and 0.27 on my pitch. I'm going for 1.44, 0.7, and 0.26 for my yaw. 1.22, 0.62. Not point one eight throttle mid. I don't know where this is going to be on this quad. 
so I'm just going to make an educated guess based on the motor size and the weight of the thing. It's probably going to be more like 35, but I'll leave it there for now. Uh, and my expo will stick it there to begin with, and I can always have a play with it later on. So we'll save that under rate profile one. Uh, that's one thing we need, because I st like to stick in Bardwell's rates and Steel's rates as well, just for a bit of comparison. I normally have under my adjustments, I believe it's OG7. Flight mode stabilized. Oh, actually, that's the point. I can't have it under that. Let's take out, I've forgotten, my failsafe. I cannot have failsafe on there. Going to change profiles and it drops out the sky. Not so good. Right, so I will set OX7, which is this switch, which I did have on my failsafe. That would have been bad. I'm going to enable all of that, have that on OX7 related to. Where is it? Rate profile selection. There we are. So we've got one, two, and three. And that will cycle through those. Just like that. Okay, so we can now save that and go back into our rate profile and see if it switches through. One, two, and three. Great. Rate profile one is where I want it. So that's all working well. Radio is still working. Telemetry is working. I'm getting the telemetry through on my radio. I'll just double check that. It's not that you can see this. But yeah, I'm getting all the telemetry through on this as well, which is nice. So, just to make sure, I'm going to delete all, then discover new sensors. And sure enough, they all come through. Fantastic. That about does it for now. Um, I'm going to wait for the, the DJI kit to turn up and then get that installed. But for now, I think this is pretty much as good as I'll get it. Um, I'll have a little tidy up and in the next section the other bits would have arrived and I'll start to fit them. So magically we'll skip forward to that right now. Mmm, bit of a tidy up, it was getting a bit too much of a pickle. I don't mind a bit of a mess but it was quite bad. So I have managed to get some extra heat uh, and put the cap in, in here which is great. So I basically just held the iron on there for ages on the on the fattest part and got some heat in at 480 degrees and eventually took and, and flowed uh, so that's cool the caps in there as well I think it's a fairly neat place for the cap uh, I've also moved the ELRS onto a sticky pad above what will be the uh, the DJI 03 housing might get rid of this housing though because uh, I've got a, a direct mount option Oh, we'll see. Anyway, and the antenna at the rear, I've just pushed that over and put a, a, a zip tie on there for now to keep it on there. So it looks kind of cool. It'll do, as they say. Power can run through here, over the back. Gives me enough room. And it's away from the, uh, the directional, not mag magnetometer. What the hell is it? the thingy. It's away from the spinny thingy. This little chip here that uh, governs where you where you are. Where you are in the world. Which way you're pointing. It is called a gyro. Of course it's called a gyro. Idiot. So this chip here that I'm pointing to there, that's the gyro. No wires going over that. Bad things happen. So that's out the way. That seems pretty cool. Camera's still not here yet, so I can't do the camera bit. But, you know, it doesn't stop us from playing around with the rest of it to see if it's sitting together nicely, which I think I will do. So, with that sat there, let's pop in a couple of, a couple of screws. You know, if you've watched all of this so far without skipping forwards, let me know. Because you deserve a medal. Right, let's just pop a couple in for now. 
that's what it's going to end up looking like. So I think the cable is kind of in an awkward position there really. It wants to come out the side but I'm sure it's going to get chopped by something. It's kind of too long but at the same time if I make it any shorter it's going to be difficult to mount it anywhere. I'll mock up where one of these props are going to go. The problem's even more apparent. You know, where do you stick this to make it sensible? If we have this here as well, you know, where's that going to go? It wants to go there. But it's just in the way just in the way. Can't have it really coming out of there. So the other option we've got with the cable is to have it coming through the midpoint and have the battery facing this way. Don't like that either. I want it that way. That is the way I want it. So how can we make that happen? Let's have a dig through here. So all that's going to be taken up by all of that stuff. I can't have that below because that would be in the way, so that has to be on top. If I bring it out the side there is real danger of that getting chopped. Let's uh, get these screws somewhere safe. What's it like coming out the side there? Yeah, I don't like that. That's really, really close. Yeah, bad things. Bad things will happen. Okay. Out the side there again. Not ideal. The other option is to kind of desolder one end and have the connector coming through here. But then that leaves me with it quite literally coming through there. That could be a bit of a mess as well. And if it were any shorter, is it going to help? Yeah, I mean it might be a bit short. It's kind of interfering with the aerial there, though. The uh, sorry, the DJI antenna, where it's going to go at least, it does make it a bit awkward, doesn't it? Hmm. Anyway, that's the next thing to work out, I suppose. Is the best place to have that. Uh, might take a sneak peek at some other people's builds and see where they've ended up shoving the cables. I don't really want to go through the carbon, uh, I don't think that's a particularly pretty build idea, but uh, I'm going to take a peek and see what I can find out. And we're back, and the delivery's been, and I've been having a little fettle in the meantime. Um, so, a couple of 3D prints finished, so I've got some feet on here now, I've had to put a couple of spaces, a couple of washers in, um, so that they're the bolts don't come through and hit the the wires but they are looking pretty good I've also got a couple of side panels here which will clip on uh, like this this is the wrong side they will clip on like that which look pretty smart I'm also doing another set with with uh, without the the holes just to, the whole tubes as a whole to stop them from falling off anyway why are we here we're here now because the DJI 03 air unit has come through. So let's get this opened and have a look. Now, I've got one of these in my Nazgul, but uh, it won't stop us doing a bit of an unboxing just now. Anyway, in the box we get uh, a warning about overheating, which we all know about that. And then in the box we have single antenna hooked up to those little IPX connectors and a camera 
four screws, the wires, and some silica gel. Delicious. Right, so I have a mount that I'm printing at the moment um, for this. I decided to print one out because the TPU mount that came with this, is as cool as it is, uh, I'm not going to use this back end uh, for the antenna. I've decided to make something a little bit more compact. And although that would have been great sat in there, I still think I could do uh, a better mounting with another, another way, another option. I think there's a better way of doing it so I'm gonna crack on and do that and get that mounted um, just wanted to check actually to see if these were yes 20 is it 25 by 25 yes 25 by 25 mounting so I've got a 25 by 25 to 20 by 20 adapter which that will sit in there on making it all nice and tidy in there allowing me to to mount it beautifully so let's go ahead and take these peels off. Very nice. And this one. Very nice. And then work out which way around I want to mount it. Now most of these units I've seen mounted upside down for whatever reason, and that might make sense with the antenna. For this one, I don't know yet. I don't know. What would make more sense? You could have all the USBs on one side of them mounted it that way around. And they give me access to the antennas. Will the cable fit? I think that's going to be our defining factor in this. That's looking like it probably will fit. Right, goggles off. Let's have a look at the cables. Here they are both entirely different. Different make of connector, but uh, same style, same pattern. So let's see if it sits in there quite happily first. If it does, then we can use that connector. If it's not happy, then we'll swap out for the one that came with the board. Yeah, although they're similar, they are a little bit different. So we've got to swap out this connector. That one just pulls out of there as well. Okay, now I've got a phone where I've put the... No idea which one it is. Is it that one? Not that one. It's not that one. This one. Might be that one. It's not that one. So many cables. It could be anywhere. I've got a bag full of rubbish here as well. Genuinely quite disorganised. That's the way we like it. Okay. No idea. I'm going to hunt for this cable. Just give it another couple of minutes, just in case. It's not in there. Nope. So we came with those three cables. I don't think it's any of those. Um, that looks like a a separate type of connector so are we gonna get a cable that fits or are we gonna have to hardwire it we shall find out very shortly I'm gonna have a little hunt to see what I can find and I'll be right back okay so it's not plug and play on this one so what we're gonna do is de-pin this and put the pins into that now we have somewhere a little box with a thing in it. Because what we need is more crap. Definitely need a busier desk. It's kind of an opportunity to use this. Oh god, it means setting it all up. Wow. Okay, maybe maybe not. Maybe maybe we'll leave that. We can't bother with that just yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to de-pin uh, this and I'm going to pin it into this. So I'm going to de-pin both uh, of these little fellas. Now to do that I need something really sharp and I don't have exactly the right tool but the idea is you 
pull up the plastic on the end there and then you're able to pull out each individual wire so for example that white one on the end you get a bit of tension on it pull up the plastic this is so easy and the pin just pops out so we're going to do that for all of these again next one just pops out next one just pops out next one just pops out and the last one don't know whether you saw any of that actually right we've got that now let's deep in the DJI connector as well let's see if I can do this where you can see it I want to deep in this nicely because if we don't, it's a lot of faffing around, soldering stuff together, and generally making a bit of a faff. So I'll try and take care of these connectors as best I can. So again, I'm just lifting up the little bit of plastic ever so slightly, enough to pull out the the pins. Look. Last two, and this is the S bus ground and S bus. So I've got a couple of diagrams open on the computer that I can refer to to make sure we get these in the right order when I re pin. So, I'm going to get the white connector. This is going to be fun. It's going to be goggles on, goggles off. What have we got? So, on the unit. We're going into this port here. We're going to use this connector, which is going to go that way around. Now I need to go from. I'm going to go from. Where am I going to go from? I'm going to go closest to me first. So the first one. Let's get rid of that. First one we're going to need is ground. Ground is obviously black. Check the wiring diagram. So we've got V bat and then ground. Is that correct? Yes. So we'll go ground. We'll wire up this connector as it comes in. So first off is ground and then it's uh then it's nine volt. So we'll go ground. All these pins like going in this different housing. Possibly possibly not. At the moment it's looking like possibly not. That would be annoying. And it's close, so let's just see if I can get it popped in there. Goggles. Okay, does go in there, it just catches, so we'll play that game. Next up is the, let's move you out of the way, is positive, so go battery connector onto here and just give me a little push in with this, gentle little push, yep they're holding. Next up we've got uh, I've got TX3 and then RX3. So TX is going to go to RX. It's going to be blue and then the grey. Blue is TX on 03. So we're going to have grey, which is RX on the 03, going to TX. So grey is next. Let's go grey. Let's grab that little monkey. Pop him in there. Can just push on the copper, get him pushed in. 
Is he in there? He is. Fantastic. Next up, we've got RX3. So it's going to be TX on the O2, which is blue. So on the O2, O3. There's no blue. This is very useful. Feedback RX. Feedback ground RX. According to that, is white on this one. V background RX TX ground and S bus. This wiring is actually different to what's on the website. Right, let me have a little poke around for another wiring diagram because I don't want to get this wrong and uh, come right back at you. Right, well. It looks like the wiring has changed at some point. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to follow the layout. The VBAT, ground, receive, transmit, and then ground and S-bus. I know ground and S-bus are correct. So, I'm going to go off the basis that the white one is receive. So, that needs to go to transmit. So, I'll swap the grey with the white on here. And then pin the rest accordingly. Hopefully it will put up with being de-pinned. One more time. There we are. Let's push him back in there. So I'm going to go with... What did I say? RX is first go to TX. So white and then grey. Fine. There's white. It's going in. Then grey. Not going to be using S bus because we have the ELRS set up, so we don't need serial bus connected on this. So we'll just run with these for now. The last pin on there is RX1. An RX1, we would run the serial bus into and then run another ground. Um, but like I say, we're not going to do that. So I think we'll just see if this is happy. Let's see if we fry anything. Or not. Hopefully, or not. Or not would be better than frying something. For sure. Now, with these, I'll just keep them separated and out of the way for now. And I will probably get my goggles shortly. So let's see if this powers up. We have a power light on the DJI box, so that is good. Okay. So I'm going to smash the rest of this back in. Um, and... Uh, and I will try the camera later. Didn't realise that was still powered on. Yeah, once my 3D print, let's see how it's doing actually. Yep, nearly there. Just once the 3D print's done, I'll be able to uh, get that in here as well. So, for now, let's just get the final pieces done and then call it a day because it's been quite a long one so we'll get the camera mounted get the lid back on and then I will cut the camera for the day um, might have a little bit of a fiddle with fitting the 25 by 25 to 20 by 20 mount once that's finished printing later and then I think we're all done DJI, there we go so you're going to sit in there like that camera good we've got the right at the very beginning for those of you that did watch the beginning got the camera in here correctly so that's good news let's find out where these holes are one there so I us know we're going to be long enough do have these little fellas in here 
four off. Which look like they would quite happily go through the mount and secure the camera. So let's give these a go. Pop him in. Pop him in from this side. Get a little bit of up tilt on there. Measure that properly later. Is this going to go in there? It should. Although looking at it, we're going to have to move the camera back ever so slightly. Ooh, nearly lost a screw. So that we can get the other screws in. So held in by two on each side. And uh, the pivot screw just in the wrong place if it's on the forward mounting so let's shift that back to here there it is I'm pretty sure will it? that's in the wrong place now but the screws line up so I'm hoping there's enough lens protrusion there that we can actually still see out the camera that would be nice Yeah, this is where the holes line up, so this is where I'm going for for now. Go with where it fits. pretty much mounted set that somewhere around 15 to 25 degrees it's in that ballpark that will do Okay, last thing will be, before I knock it on the head, to take these aerials off, which I'll do probably later. I don't have the right side screwdriver, or do I? I do. Right, let's do this now then. Remove these horrifically delicate connectors. So I have damaged a set of these before on my Nazgul. They are so delicate, it is absolutely ridiculous. Okay, now to get them off, you kind of need to pry them off very carefully. So ideally I need a smaller screwdriver than this, but let's just see if we can pop them off gently. There's one. And there's the other. Feed this through. Like so. Okay, that's now on there, and then we can pop these back on. One. Make sure they're absolutely square before you push down on them. That's how I broke the last set. Okay, but well that's gone well. 
three. Okay, we need to take care of this wiring and give it a bit of a tidy up. It would be nice to get to a point where we could spin up the motors tonight. Show you guys that. So we'll get there. We've done the basic config in beta flight. So I see no reason why not. So I'm looking forward to that magnifying setup once I get it put together. Okay, so those screws back in there, just get a good amount of pressure on them so they don't strip and do them up. Right, looking good. Let's, um, I almost want to pull that out and give that a couple of twists, but we will. Is that the print finished? It is. Not off the press. These out. Two new sides. Not too much oozing considering it's TPU. That looks pretty terrible, so that's uh, not great. That is going to be awkward to get off, but it will come off. There we are. just very thin but actually it's come out okay so here we have the antenna arrangement which kind of clips together and goes on the back that will hold the antenna We've got two new sides there which are the encapsulated enclosed versions of that a little bit more chunky as well <clears throat> and then we have the standoff as well so it's going to take the 20 mil and change it to 25 mil mount so Let's pop some of these bits on here and see how we get on. Let's get this up and out of the way. Oh, it's all getting a bit fiddly. Right, there's the antenna mount. So let's pop him on. Did I make those holes too small? No, they're just a tight fit. Okay, and turn it in, push down one side, there we go, and then the other. That's all right, the antenna's in there now in a nice little bumper. That holds up quite nicely. Then we've just got the O3 unit to put in. So in terms of how that all fixes together, we have the standoffs there with the screws that will go in. Do I have any screws long enough for that? No idea. Nothing left in there. I'd like to get to the magical screw box. So we've got anything thin enough in here? Yeah, we do. Got a fair few. Okay, so let's pull these out and see how long they are. I'm tempted to keep this the right way up, so maybe mount through the bottom. I, I, I can see why people would mount through the other side, but I think for me, and the way that it's set up, I would prefer to have this the other way around. So let's see how long these are. Not very. Have I got anything that size? Yeah, that's a bit longer. Two. Oh, they're going everywhere. Three. Four. Okay, 
Okay, and these are a little they that size. They are superb. So let's pull these out. size looking at them too big anything smaller not in there anywhere else not looking likely okay well we'll see we've got enough bite on these we might have we might not but we'll give it a go okay Yeah, there's a little bit on there. We'll see how far in we get. I don't want to have just a couple of threads attached. I want to have an amount of, of grip on this. Yeah, it's not quite enough on there. They are not the right size, so they can go away. See if I've got the cap heads which go that small. Again, it's unlikely. And now I've got the same size. They are tiny, but they're not tiny enough. Let's see if it likes the thread. First off, if it doesn't like it, I won't push it. Yeah, it likes that. Good. Right, let's give that a shot then. With these little cap heads. Place it with another one of these cap heads. Two, three, four. Okay. Get that tightened up. I'm not going to over tighten them, I just want them in there to the point where they're flush with the TPU. Yeah, they're pretty good size. I'm pleased with them. Third one and the last one. I need twisting around a little bit. Okay, let's twist them round because it's a bit distorted. I have to loosen these off a smidge. Okay, that looks pretty good. Oh, 
almost there. Four. Okay, next up. Now, take this jacket off. These are going to go into the TPU, so be really careful not to over tighten these because it's just going to make a right old mess. But let's see if they line up. They do line up, and that is good news. Let's get something a little bit more chunky, but not too much. Um, can I use those? They're too long. Are these too short? Let's have a look. So that's going to be, oops, that's going to be the depth of the carbon plus. Yeah, they look all right. Okay, let's try one of these. There's so much purple, purple everywhere. Try one of these in here. Get it lined up and see if we can get it in. Okay. Oh my god, there's stuff everywhere. So I suspect this is going to be, yeah, not quite there. Okay. So if I go with anything smaller, then the head of it is going to fit through the the hole here. So I'd need a very small washer. Do I have any small washers? I do. I've got some little tiny ones here. Let's take out four of these, and we'll use these ever so tiny little ones here. Oh, so close. Sun went down a little while ago, so there's no light. I'm using the little LED thing, which is. I mean, it's okay, but. There we go. Now whether I like that as a solution or not, I think I could engineer something a little better, if I'm honest, but for now it seems to be doing the job um, it's holding. So we'll go with it. I'm pretty sure one big knock and this unit's going to come out though because it's only a very small amount of TPU holding and gripping the screw. There's no there's no captive nut or anything, so maybe I'll design something a little bit better than than this. Moving forward, but for now it will do. Yeah, there's not a lot of not a lot of grip on those. Still I want to get this put together now. And get the blades on and spun up. So I can end the video and go and have my dinner. Okay, last one. So what this is doing is taking the 20 mil by 20 mil um, layout. And then adapting it to 25 by 25. It's not doing anything special. That is all it's doing. So I'm sure I could make something, just pop a new design in that would do a little bit of a better job than that. 
and like I say, have a captive nut system. But you know what? It's okay for now. It's it's doing the job. Okay, so we've got two unused wires there, which we'll do something with shortly. Let's pop that out. Give the wire a few twists. I'm going to be really careful on that because that's been repinned a couple of times. So let's give that a bit of a twist. And then pop it back in. I want to be really careful with this connector because it's repinned. They're all holding though, which is nice. There we go. So that's that unit in there. We can now stick. And where's that going? Oh, of course, it's going through there. That's not at all annoying, is it? Right, let's um, <laughs> free this ELRS cable, which is going where I don't want it to go. Come on. These things are sent to test. There we are. Do you know they're holding in okay, those little tiny little M2s. Put a fair amount of force on that, trying to sort of pry it apart and it actually held. So that is surprising. Maybe I'll just dab a spot of glue on the end or locker or something to get them to stick into the TPU and, and be done with it. Maybe it's good enough after all. Although, yeah, still pretty sure if I've asked to stove it into the ground, it's, it's going to move. All right, let's stick ELRS on top here because that's a good place for it. Let's move those down inside there to tidy them up. Let's twist these. What I want to do is get some cloth tape and just isolate these. I don't want to chop them off, just in case I want to use this for in something else in a different build. So what I'll do instead is I'll quite happily tape over them tape over them? No, let's let's be posh. Let's be posh. Let's get, this. Let's get some heat shrink. Let's put that heat shrink. Cut that into two. Big enough? It is big enough. Cover it in heat shrink. Make it look all pretty. One in there, one in there. Shrink those quick. Very nice. Then what I could do is get another bit of heat shrink. Be nice. Have I got a, hmm, nothing quite big enough. All right, well, let's just tuck those in there out of the way for now. Doesn't look particularly neat, but uh, oh well. Pop the O3 antenna on the back. Get that in there. Scooch that back in there. Make it look neatish. And that's looking all right, isn't it? Okay, so we want that wire to go around the outside there, not over the over the gyro. Hopefully we do that. Let's just send this down. Is this going to be a good fit? It's going to be close. Need to nibble a bit out of that. Uh, from there. Yeah, 
from there to about there I would say nibbling this out because this is where the board sits and you know for those of you that watched from the very beginning one wow how are you still watching um, but uh, yeah I'm fully aware that this board could go in and probably should go in and we're talking about the ESC here um, around the other way the other orientation and it would have no clearance issues but I didn't want that and it's my build I want it to be this way around because I didn't want the cables just flapping around in midair and that's it and that's the joy of it being your build you can do whatever you like if it works it works okay so we're getting there a bit more clearance on this Oh, these side cutters have had it. Is that good? Why is that not sitting in there? What are you catching on now? Oh, you're catching on the board. Okay, fine. Let's snip you up a bit further. Oh, these side cutters. I've got some new ones down there. Is that good? That's good-ish. Just need a small bit more. Teeny bit more out of here. So let's do that. I really want to use the other cutters. Saving them. Perhaps I shouldn't save them. This is horrific. Might as well use my teeth. Okay. That's on. This side is also no, I'm getting the other side cutters. Oh, I can't do with that. Two pairs of lovely new side cutters. There we are. Okay. So this side's gonna be the same. I'm gonna go from there. Oh look at that. Straight through to what side about there great stuff and then nip look at that done in three cuts saving all that fluff perfect that gives us our mid route that cable around there food is ready Okay, well, I better hurry up with this. Quickly smash this back together and uh, call it a night, I think. So, let's pop all this back together. Two, four, six. I've got those as well. Let's get the lid. It's looking pretty tidy. I'm happy with it. I think it looks pretty good. So I've got this mess in here to tidy up tomorrow, which I'm really looking forward to. Next, I need to do some firmware updates and get the O3 working. But the idea is do a separate video tomorrow of taking this out for a fly and then doing some some tuning as well. Do some pit tuning. The there are some pids out there for this unit with a different flight controller, the Motec flight controller that comes in the Johnny FPV pre-built unit. But uh, that's not what I'm going to apply onto this because it will be completely different. You know, flight controllers act differently. They have very different pit loops. So even though they could be the same architecture, like an F7, they could be entirely different in terms of their setup. Right. Let's wang some blades on, and then call it good. Uh, pink on the front, pink on the front. In, 
in 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 nuts. Look at this. Look at this. Okay, there's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. Okay, looking good. Let's get the strap in here. Come on, strap. Let's get the strap on. Um, let's get you on here. Nice tronco battery. Let's plug it in. Turn the radio on. Let's clear some space. Okay, I've got a signal. Let's put it in acro mode. Let's cross our fingers and let's arm it. Well, I'd call that a great success. For now, that's the build complete. I'm going to go ahead and configure the uh, the O3 unit and get it talking to the goggles, and then tomorrow we can go on and get some uh, some pitch tuning done. So, look, thanks ever so much for watching the entire thing. Uh, if you've done that, or even just thanks for watching a little bit of it, I'm absolutely knackered, but I've had a lot of fun, and my first build's gone really well. So there you go, uh, dead chuffed. Um, right, let's. Uh, I'm not really looking forward to cleaning up the mess, but. Um, Thank you, thank you very much. Subscribe and like, um, and stuff. I'm absolutely shattered. My name is Johnny, and today we found out if it will mod. Uh, yeah, it definitely will. Thanks for your time. Catch you soon.